Hey everybody, today I'm going to be responding to a video from the YouTuber Achito called Pathetic Male Feminist Tries to Own Me. The more attentive among you may have noticed that this video is about me. Uh, there I am in the thumbnail. That's me. And in this video, Achito reacts to and criticizes a recent upload of mine, Incel Street Interviews, after going over a Twitter interaction that he and I had. So before we start, who is this guy? Well, Achito is a drama commentary YouTuber with about 300,000 subscribers. He covers drama between different creators like Minecraft YouTubers, streamers, and TikTokers, and does so usually in the format of a recorded voiceover while showing some footage of him playing video games. While not an explicit political channel, there are definitely some political through lines in Achito's content. He's pretty staunchly opposed to body positivity movements, with many of his videos being explicitly fatphobic. He is highly critical of things like feminism, or whatever feminism means to this side of YouTube, and generally falls into the same reactionary talking points that many of you may be familiar with, ones you'll hear from your average anti-SJW, anti-feminist, anti-LGBTQ types. Like many of these types of drama creators, on top of covering other people's drama, he will occasionally start drama of his own, or try to, at least. He's done quite a few videos directly targeting other creators, some of whom you may know, some of whom are friends of mine. Hi friends. With these targeted videos, he often uses highly edited, unflattering, or even blatantly dishonest thumbnails, like this one about YouTuber and friend of the show, Nick is not green, where Achito edited the text to make it look like Nick tweeted at him, telling him to kill himself. So that's not great, just straight up lying in a thumbnail. Nick didn't say that. So with all this in mind, you may now be wondering, Noah, what are you doing, man? What's the point of responding to someone like this? Aren't you just falling for the drama bait? And well, yes, I am, but that's okay. I think, and I have a few reasons for this. Firstly, to be honest, I just thought it'd be fun. As I mentioned in my last video, I've been wanting to improve my argumentative writing ability, and these response videos have acted as training wheels in a sense, because they have a very simple format to follow. Play a little bit of their video, think about what they might mean if you can figure that out, and then respond, researching and debunking as necessary. I think this kind of practice will be good for when I want to tackle bigger, more serious topics. The other, more important reason, though, is that I do think there are some things that we might be able to learn here by breaking down this example of a Cheeto's video about me. This video is, on all accounts, a heaping pile of reactionary garbage. Most of it is just him making comments directed at me personally, not anything that I'm actually saying. And this guy, uh, this plus-sized man decided to chime in. You talk like a middle school girl. Oh, look at him, dude. He's doing the yikes face, dude, because that's such a yikes, bro. Are men the biggest threat to women, or are men the biggest protectors of women. These are- Bro, I promise you are neither, okay? He makes a bunch of unsubstantiated criticisms about my content without even having watched any of it. He doesn't even make it through a third of my video before calling it stupid and ending his reaction. Did you not hear that girl earlier who was like, yeah, I'm the prize, the men are the wallet. Yeah, she needs to be humbled. What, like, <laughs> like how are you gonna defend that? I, I, I don't know. Let's move on to the next video. This one's stupid. It is lazy, mean, and bad content, reprehensibly so. But I do still think there are some points to be made here. By going through and critically analyzing some of Achito's rhetorical choices, I think we might be able to learn a thing or two about how reactionary content functions, how it is both communicated and interpreted, and how some YouTube subcultures have normalized these bad habits when engaging in online discourse. I want this to be a case study of sorts, an autopsy of a bad YouTube video. Achito is far from the only creator on here that makes these kinds of videos, so my hope is that this analysis can be taken and applied elsewhere. Anyways, that's the plan for today. Sorry about the long intro. This is a bit of an experiment, so feel free to let me know how it goes afterwards in the comments below. I've left a Cheeto's video linked in the description if you'd like to go watch it to make sure that I'm not taking him out of context. And yeah, okay. Let's get started. Nah, but what's going on, guys? Today we're talking about a person who I was gonna cover a while ago after he tried to epically own me on Twitter. Which, by the way, like, we're talking about a guy who is, I think, 25 or 24. If you still care about ratioing people on Twitter past the age of, like, 20, and 20 is pushing it, right? Like, you need to grow up. Somebody was, like, talking crap about me on Twitter, and this guy, uh, this plus-sized man, decided to chime in for no reason, and he said, uh, really puts the L in Leafy Clone? And I was like, bro, I don't know who you are you're some grown man in your 20s and you're just like getting off to like just shit talking me on twitter i was like bro that's pathetic so i responded to him with dude this is how you're spending your 20s <laughs> remind me to kill myself if i end up this sad crying emoji
All right, so Achitos has a bunch of stuff there, and there are a few things that I want to zoom in on. Right off the bat, Achito has mischaracterized the interaction that we had on Twitter. He says that this tweet is me chiming in about him for no reason, but that's not true. I did have a reason. Achito made a rather mean-spirited video about a friend of mine, fellow commentary YouTuber Anna Marie Forcino. In that video, he repeatedly commented on her appearance, making fat jokes about her. Today, we'll be looking at the personification of those wooden mannequins you drew in our class, aka Andrew Tate. Was that supposed to be a joke? Like, serious question. Andrew Tate is a personified wooden mannequin? What does that make you then? A personified Snorlax? Like, what? You can also pay Andrew an additional 36 pounds a month to learn how to make that cheddar. Well, listen, I'm not Andrew Tate, but the first step to getting your cheddar up is to stop eating it all the time. He also spent the entire video when he wasn't insulting Anna Marie, defending Andrew Tate. Andrew uses his online platforms to teach other men how to live a shallow existence. You've got to be kidding me, dude. Living a shallow existence? If being a multi-millionaire kickboxer that can do whatever you want whenever you want is somehow shallow, then please, Mrs. Awful Reaction Videos, tell me, how do I live a non-shallow existence? I want your advice. So this is loser shit, obviously. And Anna Marie pointed this out. She tweeted a link to his video and wrote, Thanks for the free clout, Achito. Maybe cut out some of the fat jokes next time and actually make some cohesive points. That video from Achito has since been deleted, but before it was, I managed to screenshot the top four comments. And this screenshot was my initial reply to Anna Marie's tweet. I was having a laugh and a giggle about how all four of the top like comments on this video were shitting on Achito for defending an alleged human trafficker. And I mean, he ended up deleting the video, right? So maybe they had a point, who knows? On the thread, Anna Marie next replied, Fat L, referencing Achito's rude and entirely unnecessary comments about her body. And the the fact that the negative YouTube comments represent Achito taking an L, which stands for loss. I'm being very thorough with my definitions here because my mom watches my videos. Hi mom. Then we arrive at our final tweet, the tweet which in part influenced Achito to make his video on me, where I call him a Leafy clone. Now, if you know who Leafy is, you will have already picked up on what I meant here. But if you don't, I'll just play a clip of Leafy now. I mean, first off, you got the streamer that's just sitting there saying, stop, stop. 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 Don't call me fat. My eyes are up here, honey. Oh my god, you want to call me fat? Donate below and call me fat. I even saw this one bitch. Her fucking title of her stream was Don't Donate Insults. Are you serious? Looks and sounds familiar, right? They appear to be playing the same video game. He's even doing the same little knife flip. Thing. It's it's incredible. I get it if he enjoys this game, but like there are definitely some steps he could take here to mitigate the leafy clone allegations. So what can we draw from this first example? Well, I guess mainly that you just shouldn't take what anyone says on here at face value, even for something as seemingly insignificant as a mischaracterization like that. The full context totally flips this claim on its head. Rather than valiantly defending his right to be online without anyone canceling him or whatever, the truth is that he was just being a bit of a dick and people criticized him for it. That's it. And regardless of whether this kind of thing is being done with malicious intent or just out of incompetence or bias, it does usually end up being deceptive. And I think that's bad. It's a, it's a bad thing. All right. The second thing I want to talk about here is Achito's comments about my age. He mentions a few times how I shouldn't be on Twitter horsing around because I'm a grown man in my 20s. We're talking about a guy who is, I think, 25 or 24. This is how you're spending your 20s. He's 24. He wants to behave like a middle schooler. And the first thing I thought upon hearing these comments used as an insult is that sounds familiar. He's a 34 year old grown man, grown man, 35 and a 34 years old. Grown men in their 30s. You're 34 year old man. 31 year old fully grown people. Yeah, so that was Leafy again. My guess as to why Achita would be making these comments about me was that he must be younger than me, right? So I went to check and yeah, turns out he's 18 apparently. Now, to be fair to Achito here, 18 is very young. Looking back, I don't know where I'd be now if I'd had a 300,000 subscriber YouTube channel when I was 18. In a ditch somewhere, probably. It would have been way too much attention and validation for my young 
mind. So this is why I do think there's some leeway here, probably in terms of maturity. As such, I've tried very hard to be as objective as possible when analyzing the things that Achito is saying in this video, no matter how inflammatory they may be. With that said though, at the end of the day, he is an adult with a large YouTube platform, larger than mine, I should mention. And I do think that having this platform should come with some sense of responsibility around the things that we say. If someone's being deceptive or hateful, I think it's perfectly okay to want to call that out if they're reaching enough people with it. Just thought I'd mention that. Maybe you disagree. Uh, if so, let me know why in the comments. And yeah, okay. I have one more point to make about that first clip. And I do realize that this section is probably starting to drag, but he said a lot of stuff there and breaking it down is just, it's gonna take a while. If you're bored here, check this out. It's a photo of my cat in a video. Look who has joined me, baby to. Babe, how adorable. Her name's Babe. Meowser Babe. Bebito. Enjoy. There you go. So in that clip, Achito makes a comment about my weight, referring to me as a plus-sized man, obviously intended as an insult. And this guy, uh, this plus-sized man decided to chime in. Now, I wouldn't have anything to say about this comment other than the obvious, that it's what we'd call an ad hominem, a personal attack used as a stand-in for any actual arguments. But then he says this. The whole thing that made this interaction especially funny was because I was literally engaging with it right after after I had gotten home from the gym. So it's like I'm being told that I put the L in Leafy clone by two plus size adults who lurk on Twitter and like, I shit you not make videos like quote unquote fat phobic comedy is the worst. No bro, the worst is the way you live your life, my dude. So if I'm reading this argument correctly, what he's trying to say here is that he thinks it's ironic that two fat people are insulting him because he went to the gym that day and we didn't. And because we're fat and also make content that critiques fat phobia, which he likely interprets as promoting obesity. That's how these types usually do. If y'all stop promoting obesity and applauding people who are fat, I'll stop quick scoping the people on my timeline that are like 900 pounds. Because of all this, we are incorrect here or something. Even if I wanted to give myself an aneurysm trying to untangle this dumpster fire of an argument, at the end of the day, it's still something you might hear on an elementary school playground. You're wrong because you're fat and I'm not. And you lurk on Twitter all day while I go to the gym. So yeah, take that. However, the actual fat phobic sentiments on display here are a much more widespread issue. He makes a few assumptions during this clip, but the thing I want to touch on is the last thing he says here about the way I live my life. No bro, the worst is the way you live your life, my dude. So my question is, how do I live my life, Achito? How could you know anything about the way that I live my life? His sense of superiority there was derived from the fact that he went to the gym that day and I didn't, but how would he know that? This is me on July 15th of this year, days before this Twitter interaction, when he felt the need to comment on my weight because I wasn't at the gym or whatever. I probably was. He just assumed that I wasn't because of the way that I look. And stuff like this is a fairly common expression of fat phobia. Hey, just wanted to add a note from the editing booth. I wanna be clear in saying that the correct response to someone calling you fat is not to show clips of yourself working out. That kind of sets the tone of the response as you saying, you know, I'm working on it, okay? When you don't owe anyone that sort of response, least of all fat phobic assholes on the internet. I only showed this clip here as an example of one type of assumption someone might make about you because of your weight that does have more serious implications for people who are fat and are constantly dealing with fat phobia. I uh, just wanted to clarify that. So yeah, back to the video now. Now, I'm not someone who considers themselves fat and I don't experience fat phobia in any serious manner. But this type of body shaming and assumptions being made about one's life choices are pretty well established examples of fat phobia. Thinking that someone looks overweight and then just assuming things about their life, that they must be lazy, that they have health problems, assuming they want to hear your unsolicited advice about what they should do to lose weight, as if every aspect of society wasn't already telling them that their fatness was inherently immoral. This is the same attitude that contributes to things like medical fat phobia, where doctors will make these same assumptions about fat people, wrongfully attributing their symptoms to their fatness and telling them to just lose weight when the health problems originate from other factors, so they get misdiagnosed or things go untreated and then they die. This is a real problem. I'll leave some articles linked in the description about it. But okay, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that even small comments like the ones that he made can be outgrowths of much larger and more harmful systems 
systems. Making those comments is in some ways sustaining those systems by normalizing treating people this way in front of a large audience of people. They'll write it off as whatever bullshit tough love excuse they can come up with. But at the end of the day, it's just cruelty. And that sucks. I don't know. That's bad. There's my commentary YouTuber academic analysis. This is bad. Wow. Thank you very much for your support. Anyways, let's move on to the next section, which is my ad read. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. I had always hated buying cologne. Too many choices. So stinky. But that all changed with Scentbird. They've made it really easy to find and try out all types of new fragrances. Scentbird is a flexible monthly subscription that lets you choose a new fragrance to try every month. They have colognes, perfumes, and unisex fragrance options from over 600 of the top fragrance brands. Prada, Gucci, Versace, Baba Bibi, Volva. You get to pick which fragrance you receive each month, but if you aren't sure where to begin when choosing, Scentbird offers a quick, simple quiz based on your preferences or any colognes or perfumes that you've enjoyed using in the past. It's pretty helpful. As I said, it's flexible, so if at any point you want to skip a month or two or three, you can with no fees or penalties. This month, Scentbird sent me three different fragrances, and they all smell delicious. They come in these cool custom bottles and it's a 30-day supply. The first one I got is Forest by Rook Perfumes. It's a refreshing and natural scent. You got a little cypress, a little cedar, a subtle pine vibe. Nice musk. The second one is Bespoke by Joseph Aboud. This one is lovely and sophisticated with notes of citrus, amber, vanilla, and smoked woods. You gotta get your nose on some of this stuff. And my favorite of the three and the one I've been wearing almost every day is called Leighton from Parfums de Marly Paris. It is warm and elegant with coffee, lavender, and fruit tones, leaving me going, wow, this smells great. You can choose from fragrances like these each month for just $17, but with my code, you can get your first month for just a little over $7. Just use code NS55 or click the link in the description to claim your discount. Once again, that's code NS55 for 55% off your first month with Scentbird, available in the USA and Canada. Thank you, Scentbird, for partnering with me on this video. Links below. Okay, now let's get back to the video. Anyway, Anyways, that's just some background about my little uh, spat with this guy on Twitter before we talk about who he is, you know? So who who is this guy? Who am I talking about? This guy's name is Noah Sampson, and I mean, just by looking at him, you can kind of infer the type of videos he makes. Incel street interviews. Worst incel pickup lines. Incel content is dangerous. Vampire incel? And then who could forget about the best video on this channel? Are straight people okay? Like, bro, you talk like a middle school girl. Like, all your YouTube titles sound like the posts on the Instagram stories of middle school girls. I must say, I'm not all that familiar with what the Instagram stories of middle school girls are saying these days, so he could be right. I guess. But there is one thing I want to talk about from this clip here. It might seem like a minor thing, like a middle school girl thing, but when a Cheeto rattles off that list of my video's titles in a sort of mocking tone and then makes that negative comment, this is actually a pretty common rhetorical device on YouTube, especially commentary YouTube. While you're introducing someone that you're criticizing, you might list off their video titles with some music behind it or something under the impression that your audience will pick up on what's wrong here based on how you normally talk about these issues. So he knows that based on how he's criticized feminism and anti-straight prejudice in his prior videos, his audience will likely pick up on the fact that the person he's introducing is a little bit weird, a bit of a weird guy. And I've actually done this before in my own content. Here's a clip from a video of mine called Incel Content is Dangerous. Are you sub five, normie, or Chad? How to know when it's truly over. Why the black pill is so underrated in 2021. Four in-depth reasons. 100 black pill beliefs in one video. Warning, the gap between normies and chads is growing. Oh, they even have a four part series analyzing the mathematically, scientifically, objectively perfect male face. It's a similar thing, right? Listing off this channel's titles and thumbnails in a dramatic voice with intense music. This is done under the assumption that you, the Noah Sampson channel viewer, will notice that having skull shape measurements in your thumbnails or incel terminology in your titles means that you might be a slightly strange guy. Now, you might not have an issue with this. You might feel like this type of thing is meant as a joke more than anything. A shared understanding within a community about the sort 
sort of meaning that we draw from certain signs on the internet. And in some ways, it is. And there should be room for that on YouTube, probably. But it's also kind of poisoning the well, right? In both cases, we're presenting something as being bad or harmful or cringe without explaining why or even engaging with any of the content. And after seeing how a Cheeto did it here to me, I realized that this can actually be pretty unhelpful, especially if somebody is watching that doesn't already agree with what you're saying, that doesn't already feel the way you feel about the content being presented. It's a small but definite way to help promote an echo chamber. And I don't want that, so I'm not gonna be doing this in my content anymore. I'm not saying that no one should, but just that moving forward, I don't want to. I want to try to provide explanations for things before making fun of them. That's just something I'd like to be cognizant of as a community moving forward. But of course, the difference here is that my opinion is evidenced by the text and a Cheetos is not. If you disagree, explain why. Anyways, let's move on. So finally, we arrive at the reaction bit where a Cheeto starts watching my content. The video of mine that he watches is Incel Street Interviews. Now, I've already gone over a response to this from a couple of weeks ago, responding to Sneeko, it was called. So to avoid repeating myself, I'm just gonna go over a few things from a Cheeto's video that I haven't yet touched on and then try to relate these to broader points. So in his response, a Cheeto does some interesting things. Firstly, there are moments when he tries to refute the points that I'm setting up before I'm even done setting them up. Content designed to portray and foster negative attitudes towards women. No, not all. Oh, oh my God, bro. Like that's such a little slimy rat like tactic that he does. Yeah, dude, these videos exist to make people hate women. No, they don't, bro. It's just to like interview people and show people the result of it. A similar thing that he does is asking questions that are later directly answered by the content of my video. But because he doesn't actually finish my video, let's move on to the next video. This one's stupid. Or even really pay attention to what I'm saying in the part that he does watch. By the end of it, these questions largely remain unanswered for him and his audience. If we look at the reception of this content, we can see that this agenda is being onboarded by the audience. What agenda, bro? Like, they're literally going out to people asking questions and getting honest responses. I should mention that at this point in his reaction, Achito is only one minute and 30 seconds into my video. So when he asks what agenda I'm talking about, I'm gonna tell you about it, Achito. Just let me get through my intro, please. Returning viewers of the channel may recognize the reaction on display here. Get to the fucking point, bro. Get to the point! What's the... We understand what the... Everyone knows what... Creepy. He does a similar thing later on in the video when I'm setting up a point by first making a concession. Now, if you're someone who watches and enjoys the It's Complicated channel channel, I'm not here calling you an incel. I mean, yeah, but you did say people who consume it are being affected by a channel who's fostering negative ideas against women. Like, that makes no sense, bro. So, like, you're saying, you know, people are incels, but they're not. Like, what are you saying, bro? So, he almost perfectly summarizes my argument there that the channel is fostering misogynistic attitudes and that this can lead to incel rhetoric only to ignore this argument entirely and act like I'm calling people incels, which is what I just said that I'm not doing. It's really frustrating, you know, because he's so close, but so far, but okay. I bring up these examples here because they represent a pretty well-established limitation of the reaction video format. If you are making a video about another piece of content and you don't at least watch the video beforehand so you have a bigger picture of what the content is, this is called pre-watching and is considered a federal crime among many live streaming communities, then you're opening yourself up to the possibility of jumping to the wrong conclusions about what's being said. And this is nothing new on YouTube. I'm reminded here of an older video from the video essayist Sean called Sargon of a cod can't read. This is from all the way back in 2017, but it's still one of the better examples I've seen of this phenomenon. This whole getting everything wrong, but never going back to correct myself because I forgot or I just don't care thing. Sargon reads one line of an article, then pauses to go off on tangents and make a bunch of assumptions, some of which are contradicted by the evidence on the screen that he just hasn't read yet. Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and Google Home have women's voices because women's voices make more money because people prefer them. Uh, yes, Carl, because people prefer them. It even literally says that currently 
on the screen. A lot of this has to do with prior bias. You feel a certain way about a thing and admitting or considering that you might be wrong about that thing, that's a hard thing to do, especially during a live reaction. You will always trend towards coming up with some half-baked excuse as to why the opposition is wrong. Now, I'm not saying here that we should expect every content creator to write a video essay every time they have something that they want to say. Part of what can make commentary great is those instant reactions. Because the people who are good at it are able to be fair to the source material. Or if they're just genuinely funny, they're able to sort of sidestep those requirements. Branding it as strictly entertainment or comedic commentary. But if we want to argue for something, politically or otherwise, as a Cheeto seems to be wanting to do here, he's debunking my video, right? Or trying to at least, then surely we can do better than this. What agenda, bro? That's such a little slimy rat tactic that he does. People are incels, but they're not. Like, what are you saying, bro? Like, at least having the integrity to allow whoever's trying to make their points, make their points before chiming in to tell them they're wrong. What I think is probably likely is that Achito and other creators like him, they have a format that they've been using for years. You know, play a video, then pause it to make a snarky comment, and then just keep going. No need to backtrack or address prior counter arguments because that's not why the audience is there. They are there to hear him do the epic, angry, shouty gamer guy stuff. And with this approach, his channel has been doing just fine. So why bother changing it, right? And this is where I will assert that, well, he should change it because when he does stuff like what he did in his video about me, it's just terrible content. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean, it's dishonest and it's lazy and it doesn't give viewers the full picture of anything that he's talking about. Just mindless preaching to the choir about how I'm the bad guy, feeling zero urge to actually explain this position, taking everything he can in the least charitable way possible. And although I can't make him change any of this stuff, maybe something I've said or will say here might get him or his audience thinking. Because that's the thing, it's not like he's going to stop making content anytime soon. So may as well see if it can improve somewhat. I don't know, just a couple thoughts there. L moving on. So as we just looked at, Achito is very opposed to the idea that these interviews could be framed in a way that promotes misogynistic attitudes. He repeats this sentiment a few more times. This guy Noah is saying basically that these videos will lead to people thinking that all women are liars and then his little evidence for supporting that claim is a clip of Sneeko obviously like being dramatic for the camera and saying that this woman is not a prize and calling her out for being full of herself in this interview. Like, what are you talking about? That's such a reach in logic. That's, just a, that's like a stretch, bro. So I thought it'd be fun to put this idea to the test by analyzing his own reaction video. Because he did mention having reacted to this interview channel before. Don't be like these women. That's the name of the video. Seems fine. This is important because as I've pointed out in prior videos, this interview channel is a huge content farm for the Manosphere, Red Pill, and reactionary type channels like Achitos. So covering this again can't hurt, I don't think. Just to clarify things that maybe weren't made clear before. So with this particular interview, titled You Think You're a 10, the majority of the video focuses on a two-part question-answer setup. First, the interviewer asks these women, who is better at self-improvement, men or women? He then follows this question up by asking them to rate themselves on a scale from 1 to 10. Who is better at self-improvement, men or women? Women. Self-improvement, definitely women. Okay, rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. Tens oh, across the board. Oh, period. Okay, isn't saying you're a 10 admitting there's no room for improvement? No. No, no. not at all. Isn't the first step towards improvement admitting you're not perfect? You're we right. Yes. We were perfect. We just said we, we just were, were tens. tens. That doesn't, you didn't say that being on a scale of one to 10, 10 being perfect. Correct. Well, so well what, would be, what would be perfect then? On a scale of one to 10? There is no perfect, really. So this is clearly a setup to catch them out on a contradiction. You know, you claim that women are best at self-improvement, yet you call yourself a 10. How can you claim to be good at self-improving when, according to you, you're already perfect? There are a few issues here, though. Firstly, and most obviously, these questions don't necessarily contradict. Someone can call themselves a 10 and still want to self-improve because the 1 to 10 scale is a made-up thing. It's not real, it's not science. And because it's made up, not everyone will interpret or answer this question in the same way. What one person might consider a 10, another person might consider a 6. What one person might consider a strict looks maxing scale that you must abide by like a religion, or else you're a conceited femoid that's hurtling headfirst at the wall, another person might 
be normal and view it perhaps as an opportunity to express confidence to gas themselves and their friends up during a night out on the las vegas strip and the latter is how the majority of the women interviewed seem to take this question let's see how achito views it rate yourself on a scale of one to ten Hands across the board. Oh, period. Okay, there's having self-confidence and being happy with how you look. And then there's this weird self-worship that they're doing. A 10 isn't below average. It's not average. It's not even above average. It is literally perfect. I'm sorry, but you're not perfect. Isn't the first step towards improvement admitting you're not perfect? You're right. Yes. We were perfect. We just said we, we just were, were tens. tens. That doesn't, you didn't say that being on a scale of one to 10, 10 being perfect. Correct. Well, so well what, would be, what would be perfect then? On a scale of one to ten. There is no perfect, really. Yeah, I don't think anything has to be said about that one. I think the delusion just speaks for itself. There is no perfect on a scale from one to ten. Uh, yeah, there is, actually. It's ten, because you can't go higher than ten. So, I find Achito's reaction here very interesting to watch. Because, for those of us who did the reading, we know that this is exactly how the interviewer wants him to react. The anger in his reaction. This pure resentment. Yeah, there is, actually. It's ten. This interviewer knows what he's doing. He knows that guys like Achito are going to uncritically consume these videos and walk away with the conclusion that all of the women that call themselves tens must be delusional, arrogant, and what did he call it? Self-worshipping? The only way for this audience of men to be happy here is if the women rate themselves accurately, which really means how much I, the male audience member, want to fuck them. The men are there to either see these women put themselves down or have themselves held accountable by the interviewer, who is pointing out their delusion. And neither of these are good things in my opinion. And so, the rest of Achito's video is him basically making this same point over and over again, that calling yourself a 10 is self-worship, and that these women need to humble themselves. Did you not hear that girl earlier who was like, yeah, I'm the prize, the men are the wallet. Yeah, she needs to be humbled! What? Like, what? <laughs> he blatantly ignores where the women directly counter these points, by saying that despite rating themselves as 10s, there still always is room for improvement. So, like, there's always room for improvement, we just think highly of ourselves, yeah. but there's always room for we just think highly of ourselves. Well, isn't the first step towards improvement admitting you're not perfect? No, it just means that there's room to grow, right? Yes. Like, literally no. He ignores the moments where the women try to explain that everyone should want to rate themselves a 10, because everyone should at least try to be confident. I think people, everybody should think highly yes. of themselves. You, you should, should too. All the way yep. out in the outer you space. Should. Okay, they're just talking actual nonsense at this point, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna interject. Uh, yeah. Why does he ignore these things? Because they don't fit the narrative. The narrative that he has uncritically accepted from this interview channel. The same narrative that I was trying to explain in my video, the video that he just ignored. And, you know, perhaps I could have been clearer or more concise about my explanation. Maybe if I'd started immediately by showing examples and giving reasoning, he'd have actually made it to the end. I think if I were given an opportunity to go back in time to make this video again, I would probably try to do that. But I don't know. That seems like an unfair standard to uphold. Because even when Ichido hears my primary arguments, he either misconstrues them or mocks them or ignores them entirely. And I don't think any amount of structured argumentation could have stopped this from happening. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Who knows? Anyways, let's move on to the next point. We, as men and boys, might want to view this media with a more critical eye, especially as it pertains to the narratives that we draw from what we are seeing. Narratives about the nature of women, modern females, and other stuff like that. Okay, so this is, I guess, a little bit good because he's being somewhat insightful. Yeah, you should always think about stuff that you see with a critical lens. Like, I I'm obviously very pro-critical thinking, but is he, like he's saying, oh yeah, dude, I'm so pro-critical thinking, but then makes a three-word title, Incel Street Interviews. That's not looking at this whole thing very critically. You seem to have summed it up and put it in a very small box. So critical thinking is defined as the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. That video title, Incel Street Interviews, was my judgment on the content after analyzing it in my video. If you disagree with this judgment, that's fine, but you need to explain why. And it would help also if you actually 
watch the video. But until you do either of those things, no, you are not thinking critically about this topic. Now, there is definitely an argument to be made there about the reductive nature of YouTube titles, how we are incentivized to narrow broad topics down to titles that may not be 100% accurate to the content, but are the most clickable. However, if we're using reductive titles as a metric for our ability to think critically, what's going on here? Pathetic male feminist tries to own me, we critically analyzed that interaction earlier, this is not what happened, is it? Seems like it's being put into a very small box there. Or a better example, a Cheetos video, Psycho TikTok Mom accidentally gets exposed, where he watches a clip posted by the libs of TikTok Twitter account of a mom supposedly being exposed by her son for convincing him to be gay. Am gay or a lesbian or any of that, she doesn't care. All she cares about is that I'm a part of it. And if I'm not a part of it, she'll try to convince me to uh, um, get, join it. Cause I- What? Are you sorry right now? Nah, let him finish. Let him finish because he almost just exposed you, bro. Bro literally said, if I'm not a part of the LGBT community, my mom would try to convince me to join it. Nah, bro, that is not right. But later on in that video, a Cheeto plays the full clip in context and acknowledges that the mom was not doing that that she had not been exposed, and that the kid had misspoke. Why would I convince you? I would have convinced you. that's why I should speak instead of you. Yeah, I don't okay. think I've ever convinced. Do you know what the word convinced means? No. Convinced means that I'm making you be something. Okay, so it's good that the mom eventually said like, yeah, I wouldn't force my kid to be gay or LGBT, because that's sort of what it was sounding like for a little bit. Yet the title remains. Psycho TikTok mom accidentally gets exposed. Dishonestly framing the content in this way is playing into the whole gay agenda Agenda, LGBTQ groomer panic, one that is stoked by demonic accounts like libs of TikTok and then echoed by useful idiots like a Cheeto and has led to literal hate crimes. Just yesterday, another bomb threat was called into the Boston Children's Hospital all over a false story, not unlike this one, being spread by that media pipeline. Is this what we are calling critical thinking now? Because I disagree. I disagree. I want to play a related clip here from later on in the reaction. In many ways, it's actually just pushing its own version of the status quo. The one where we take street interview clips and from them surmise that women ought to be seen and understood as liars. Like, who is saying that, bro? Only you are saying that. Like, okay, yeah, sure, there's probably one, two, maybe three people who actually will watch one of these videos and think, oh my god, women are awful. But those people are just ret like, they're just not even worth dealing with. The majority, and I mean strong majority of people who watch this sort of stuff like me and my audience, we don't, like, hate women. Like, what are you talking about? So here, Achito disputes my claim that this channel wants women to be seen and understood as liars. He says that there is a maximum of three people that interpret this content in the way that I am describing. However, as I showed in my video, this is not the case. The following were just a few comments from the street interview comment section. Never underestimate a woman's ability to to avoid accountability at all costs. I had an argument with my eight-year-old niece yesterday. Okay. I truly believe the thought processes and childish antics between my niece and these women are no different. The level of egos with these below average women is astonishing. These statements, which all generalize women as being childish, irresponsible, or egotistical, have all been favorited by the It's Complicated account owner. Additionally, while Achito's comment section isn't quite as bad as the street interview comment section, there are definitely still some iffy comments. Comments. These women are a 12 out of 10 on the stupidity scale. I hate that some women act like this, it's embarrassing. They just take one insignificant aspect about themselves and try to make it praiseworthy because they have nothing to bring to the table. What in the narcissist is going on here? Seriously, the selfishness and overall negative personality qualities is 12 out of 10. Now, I'm not gonna say that these comments are proof that misogyny is creeping into this guy's audience. Everyone interprets this content in their own ways and it's very possible that this is just a Cheeto's young audience audience echoing his energy on this topic, but to deny that there's any possible link here between these spaces and misogynistic rhetoric just because you feel like there isn't one and you refuse to explain why, well, that's not thinking very critically in my opinion. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about today is one of the things that seemed to bother Achito the most about my video. It was my comment about Kevin Samuels, where I called him the late, not so great Kevin Samuels. The late, not so great Kevin Samuels. What? 
Bro, this guy died last year, and you're, like, shitting on him? Are we just gonna skip over that, bro? This guy died of a heart attack, and you're, like, shitting on his takes post-mortem? What? That's so, like, low. Like, by the way, this is a guy who's gonna complain about fatphobic comedy being hurtful, but at the same time has no issue just shitting on a guy who died of a heart attack, like, a year ago. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, everybody who thinks this guy has such a good moral compass because he's gonna call fatphobic comedy hurtful and violent or whatever, he's just gonna go and do this and nobody bats an eye? Okay. So, Achito here says that criticizing Kevin Samuels' takes post-mortem is low of me to do. And at first, I wanted to ask why. You know, like... Just because someone dies, does that mean we're not allowed to criticize their actions in life? Is it by virtue of the recency of his death that this has upset him? He mentions that Kevin Samuels died just last year. If that's too soon, then when am I able to make this comment? But then I thought about it and realized that, well, based on the content that Nachito probably is surrounded with, which is without a doubt closer to the manosphere than I am, Nachito might just have no idea why that comment is, in my opinion, justified. And he's someone who might actually benefit from hearing an explanation explanation. So let's do that. Kevin Samuels sucked not because he had a heart attack, but because he was a misogynist, a grifter who built a massive platform by exploiting the embarrassment and degradation of women, specifically black women. He parroted conservative talking points and misogynoir to a million dudes online who went on to spread this message across the web and world. A message that focused primarily on humbling women and holding women accountable, which when done on the internet via content and to women you do not know, is really just code for putting women down. We've been over this. It's the same thing we saw Achito do in his reaction. She needs to be humbled. What? Like, what? <laughs> it's the same thing we've seen Sneeko doing in prior videos. Why is this fat, ugly bitch still talking about ugly people? You are literally the ugly bitch of the group. She's so gassed the up right now and you're a three bitch you're a fucking three the same thing that the interview channel wants them to be doing shout out to the it's complicated channel got some great content over there when does it become harassment that's why i love the shout out to the it's complicated channel i love a lot of the questions that men ask so all of this does fall under the not so great classification in my opinion if you want to learn more about kevin samuels and why he's bad i'd highly recommend fd signifier's latest video on the black manosphere i'll leave that linked in the description it is feature film length but you should still watch it because we do need more healthy boys so so to close this out, I just want to reiterate that this video is not my attempt to cancel the guy I was talking about. I don't want to do that, and even if I did, that's not how YouTube as a platform works. Achito and others like him will continue putting out content on this website, and no response video will get in the way of that. However, I do think that exposing people, whether that's content creators or their audiences, to other perspectives on how we can improve the way that we operate in this content creation space may be beneficial in the long run. I think that a lot of the examples we looked at today are pretty widespread issues on YouTube. A good portion of this platform still does not understand why making comments about people's weight or using ableist slurs or blindly supporting misogynistic narratives, none of this is all that funny or epic. Many people, audience members and creators alike, lack the ability or willingness to critically engage with content from creators that they disagree with before jumping to conclusions and forming judgments about them. I'm guilty of this, we all are. It's human. It's also the way these platforms are designed. We're incentivized algorithmically to churn out low effort choir preaching content every day because it will pile up more views over time and make us more money in the long run. It's also just easier and that's the most valid reason to want to do something in my opinion. But all these things come at a cost, right? They come at the cost of our ability to understand one another, to have some sort of integrity as content creators, and to discuss ideas and events in an honest way. And the only way to fight against this, at least the only way that I can think of, is to hold one another accountable. And no, I don't mean hold holding femoids accountable accountable. I mean identifying specific examples of where creators or commenters might have got something wrong and explaining why in a calm and collected manner. This seems to help a lot from the short time that I've been trying to do it. So yeah, anyways, uh, that's all I wanted to say today. As I mentioned, let me know what you thought of this response video format. I might do more of these, who knows. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the links below and use code NS55. 5% off your first month. Have a good stuff. And that. Bye. NS55. NS55. NS55.